Well, thanks for joining me once again in my shop. And just before I get going on the uh, Kalmar again, which I'm going to bring back in and put on the bench, the Kalmar which burned a hole in my, <laughs> my mat, uh, I thought I'd show you a couple of things that I've uh, been fortunate enough to acquire in the last uh, week. Uh, partially from the generosity of a friend of mine and partially because I was at a hand flea market. So first of all, two great big honking resistors. So I got a comment a couple weeks ago about uh, that I, I really need some large high wattage resistors to act as dummy loads on the output of powerful stereos or radios or whatever. Um, so I can operate them without having a speaker connected and getting my ears blown away. I can turn the radio up very high then and stuff like that. And look what I acquired. These are both 100 watt 10 ohm resistors, which I think will do quite nicely as dummy uh, speakers. Uh, two of them, in case I'm doing something with a stereo set. And I also picked up this high wattage resistor. Um, don't even know what its value is necessarily, but I see it's adjustable. I thought that was kind of neat. That would be a neat thing to have in the shop. So, but I'll have to test it and see. Uh, well, hey, why don't I do that right now? Why not? Now's as good a time as any. Find out what it is I've got here. I think I'll do it with a couple of clip leads. Try to read the entire resistance here, if I can. I'm trying to make this thing not have a contact. That's really what I need to know. Yeah, I think I'm getting 60 ohms on that. Contact, 35, and on down. Eight or nine. Yeah, highest number I'm seeing. Oh, 73. Might have just been a funny moment there. Let's see. I can slide it all the way up to this end anyway. I can do that. 77 I saw. Well, it's somewhere around 60, 70 ohms. Not bad. Okay, so three high wattage resistors. Now, what else did I get? I got another instrument. Um, one you won't see too often, I don't think. There it is. The mystery box. Well, it's not a mystery to me. Let's pop it open here. Okay. Ah. Okay, so some of you know already what this is. And maybe you can read right on the front. My camera stays focused. It says Tunnel Dipper. Dipper is the hint. So it's a Heath Kit dip meter. It has a variable control here. And see the colors across here? They match up with the colors on these. These are coils. Here, this one you can really tell is a coil. Since we take the red one, this is the one that's at the bottom of the scale, it looks orange. It's actually red. I guess that color's changed. We plug it in there. Switch it on. It has two settings, diode and oscillator. I switched it over to oscillator. 
as I turn this coil, or this uh, capacitor actually is what I'm turning, or this dial, the oscillator built in here will oscillate because this is the coil that's plugged in. And I'm on this band down here, all the way from 3 megahertz up to 7.5 megahertz. And by putting in smaller and smaller coils, this being the smallest one here, the coil is just right out on the end here. This thing will uh, oscillate all the way up to 260 megahertz. Wow. Okay, so it's meant for UHF, VHF. Uh, it's continuous all the way from 3 all the way up to 260 megahertz. Now, it's not a perfect guy. You can see the meter is not going anywhere. The meter should be going upscale as I turn this control. It works once in a while, but what I discovered in playing around with it is that it's actually working all the time. It's the meter and the circuits driving the meter that are in trouble. The unit itself is doing its job all the time. So right now it's switched on to oscillator, and you know I've got it set to four, four point five or so. There's a definite four point five. 4.8 uh, megahertz signal coming out of this. Uh, no question about it. Now, now that's interesting in itself. That means I can dial up a frequency here, know that it's coming out of this coil, and then hold this up near things, whatever it might be, and uh, see what happens. So, but, but the real feature of a dip meter is this setting here, a diode. For this to become useful, I have to get this meter going. So if this were working properly, the meter would be upscale. I would adjust it with this control. No, it's still not going to work for us. I would adjust it somewhere up here. I would hold this up against a, a tank circuit, a coil and capacitor, like an IF can. Only you have to take the metal can off. You have to get up next to the coil. And then I would carefully turn this control, and careful is the word for it, and at some point, the meter would dip, would dip down, come back up, and I tune it back and forth. I'll find a spot where the meter dips and stays. And that tells me the resonant frequency of the tank circuit that I'm testing. Very interesting uh, device, uh, commonly used by ham radio operators, and tuning up transmitters and things like that. I, I assume to get things tuned up close enough so that they can start putting some power out and finish the tune-up process through some other means. And this is not a very precise device at all. But uh, interesting thing to have in the shop. I've had some fun with it already. Uh, I didn't bother videoing it. Maybe that was a shame because it turned out to be an interesting journey discovering that in fact, although it looks like it doesn't work, it does in fact work. Well, works halfway. So that's an interesting guy I've got here. Pretty tight inside. Um, if there's a fault in a component on the board that's inside here, it's not easy to take it all apart and get that part exposed. So I can replace it. So I'm, not, I'm a little hesitant to do that. And I have other, other tough stuff I'm trying to do right now. So for now, it's just going to go away shelf. Pretty cool, eh? Okay, so that's one thing. And now the last thing I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show it to you. I'm not going to try to operate it or anything. Let's see if I can just swing my camera around here. So, there it is. Heathkit Condenser Checker. This is a well-known capacitor checker. Um, I think there's lots of these floating around. And uh, what I can do with this unit is I can measure the capacitance of any capacitor. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to wait for an actual need to do it. Um, it all works. Works fine. Uh, it's not plugged in right at the moment. It has a magic eye, uh, which you use to determine when you've got this set to the right spot. You can also test the leakage on 
capacitors at various voltage levels, 25, 150, 250, 350, and 450. Again, you look at the eye to determine the condition. Flip this over and get a measurement. So I think this is going to be a real handy, uh, real handy uh, device. So that's that's the most recent additions to my shop. Um, real happy about this. This really fills a gap, a terrible gap I've had basically my entire life of playing around with electronics. I've, I've always wanted something like this. And now I got it, so it's great. So let's get on now to... Uh, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just make this a quick video in itself. And I'll start up another video as we get back to working on one of the radios. That's uh, giving me a hard time. So thanks so much for watching this little presentation.